All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Financial Literacy with TC. I'm your host, TC. Like I always say, you could have chosen any podcast in the world to listen to, but you chose to listen to mine, so I'm always appreciative of that. Uh, today's guest is somebody who is a great friend of mine, uh, somebody I look up to in the financial industry and in the financial game. Um, he goes by a lot of different names, Arthur Robinson, Art, <laughs> um, but we're going to call him by his government name, Arthur Robinson. And before he uh, introduces himself, I just want to give a little bit of uh, context of who he is and what he does. But before I do so, I want to give a shout out to Crystal Light Works Studio. This is where we've been for the past two uh, podcast episodes. Um, so I want to thank Crystal Light Works Studio for allowing Financial Literacy with TC uh, to be a representative of the studio and do the podcast out of here. So um, check out the studio, check out the information on our social media platform, Financial Literacy with TC on YouTube and Facebook. Hit that subscribe button and uh, tune into all of our episodes each week. So Arthur Robinson, my man, thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong when I start to get into some of the stuff you've done and, and do. No problem. Uh, so, most recently, you were a financial executive, um, so you did financial management various for various industries, financial mm -hmm. planning. Um, mm -hmm. You worked for BCI Engineering. Correct. And then you also, let's see, uh, Gateway Health Plan, you were Director of Financial Planning and Analysis. Yes, indeed. Or, yeah. Did I say that correct? Analysis, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, man, and you've had a lot of financial jobs, and I don't even really want to go down the whole resume, yeah, no. but um, yeah. this man is somebody who's been doing a lot in the financial game. Uh, you got your MBA. Mm -hmm. um, what was the college again? I'm sorry. Um, Andrew College, back Andrew in Madison, college. Wisconsin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this man is just really knowledgeable about financial literacy, financial uh, spending and actually that's today's topic um, just understanding financial spending especially in the black community where our dollar is going and uh, without a further ado I want to just introduce Arthur Robinson man appreciate you coming on oh, man thank you for the introduction <laughs> and and I appreciate it I feel like uh, that was pretty uh, succinct how you put that together so yeah. I appreciate it but I even you know not to cut you off real quick but I even mentioned you a father oh, and goodness, you got yes. uh, you got a lot going on, and you also have a uh, app that you're creating yeah. mm -hmm. called Black Diamond. I'm actually on it. So, mm -hmm. a lot of things we didn't get into yet, only because I want to mm -hmm. leave the suspense, and we're going to get into it. So, All right. no problem. This man is very versatile. Yeah, thank, <laughs> hey, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So, um, no, yeah, my background has been mainly in uh, in a strategic financial role. So, you have like accountants who do the counting of the money and the debits and credits, and that's not what I do. I'm more strategic finance. How are you spending money? Um, the capital planning, um, what is your return on investment? Where, how are you going to use this money to really make your business grow or to, to gain a revenue? Right. So looking at money as a vehicle to really drive revenue, to drive growth, um, to make sure it's uh, accounted for correctly and used correctly, that's kind of my goal. And I've done that in finance. I've driven revenue for companies. I've helped them stay profitable yes. and, and really helping companies really grow. So that's kind of my background, and that's what I, I seek to do every single day. And I really want to work with small businesses now yes. and provide them some financial help and work with every organization I can to really help them understand how money is used, where is the best way to, to, uh, to spend it, to drive growth and make sure you're using it very wisely. So I thank you for the introduction and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, Man, and I'm, I'm excited because you hit on a lot of things uh, which, you, which you've done and which you're currently doing. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, for those who don't know my audience, you know, I attend, um, I'm one of the hosts for Wealth Wednesday that mm -hmm. we do at Nobleman Cigar Lounge. So we're always in rooms with individuals who um, are looking to understand money and how to make uh, their money work best for them. Mm -hmm. And I only bring that up because, uh, shout out to Brandon Rice, Wealth Wednesdays, um, Nobleman Cigar Lounge, shout out to them. Um, individuals like yourself are the people that they need to be reaching out to and mm -hmm. being in contact with because your background also on top of what your future looks like mm -hmm. can help a lot of people in the black community especially business owners and that's who that room is made up of yeah. a lot of business owners so before we get into really how you uh, help businesses execute uh, financial spending and planning mm -hmm. uh, I kind of want to start from how you even got to where you are today 
because um, if I'm not mistaken, you're from Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay, good. I got that right. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, yeah. um, not the, and then uh, you know, you made your way to Pittsburgh. Um, you only been here for what? Five years. Five years. Okay. Five years. I knew it was less than ten. <laughs> yeah. And then you also, you know, you got your MBA at Edgewood. So if you could just give a quick background on how you got into finances yeah. and what yeah. what started everything yeah. for you. For all my Pittsburghers out there, my Yenzers, I am a uh, Wisconsinite, born and raised. I love the city of Milwaukee. Great place on the Great Lake. But I, I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison for undergrad. Went to um, and basically graduated from there. Started insurance and raised a family there. About five years ago, I was um, looking for a job outside of Wisconsin to see something else. And it was a great opportunity here in Pittsburgh. Gateway Health Plan just got Medicaid for the entire state of Pennsylvania. Oh, right. It was a growing company. They wanted somebody to lead their uh, fp and team. Right. So they recruited me in. I, uh, my first time here, um, the taxi is bringing me through <laughs> Fort Pitt Tunnel. Yep. And I'm seeing the Highmark building. And I'm like, wow. Right. This is my first time in Pittsburgh. It is a great view from the bridge. Yep. The rivers look great. I've heard about three rivers because I'm a football fan, so I know about the old yeah, Steelers. Steelers yeah, so yeah. I know about the old the, the three the rivers. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm a fan like that. But then just seeing the city, and then when I drove my wife out here, she was like, "Wow!" So we really love being out here. We love the neighborhoods. We love the history. Right. And so that that's what brought me here. And then uh, where I'm at right now is like um, Tyler said, I started a mobile application because I'm an entrepreneur. Right. And my mobile application is trying to really promote black owned businesses, try to help them gain more revenue, and then do that by offering customers um, gift, gift rewards and cash back. And that was an idea I had back in Wisconsin. I started something called the um, Minority Business Directory. Mm. Madison's a smaller, has a smaller black community, right. but they, need, they still needed some emphasis on those businesses. So I made a, a magazine for like five years, right. promoted um, black owned businesses, Hispanic owned businesses, Try to get people to shop there, right? And because I think there's a need to keep the light on those businesses. Yep. And so, this application is just that on steroids, but more using technology, and using rewards and gifts because people love incentives. Absolutely. They love to get money back, and then with this economy, they're trying to save money. Absolutely. So we're trying to help them <laughs> put money back in their pocket, and this reward really focuses on. If you shop at a local uh, black um, business or if you shop at one that's at Target or Walmart, yeah. which I go into later, but you can really support those businesses as well as put money back in your pocket. And that's our, our aim is to really incent that. So. And that's huge because a lot of times black businesses, um, you know, we're now in the entrepreneurial hub, what I'll call entrepreneurial hub. Yes. There's been a lot of advancement from the standpoint of who we see making moves in the city mm -hmm. of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, you and I both, I think our initial relationship started when I was at my financial institution and we connected with Camille Bailey, yes. Samantha Black mm -hmm. for a Greenwood plan. Yep, for Greenwood and, plan. But you had already been making moves and relationships. Yes. Um, Cause I think we had met at a few events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I only bring that up because you really hit the ground running with taking what you were doing in Wisconsin, bringing it to Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, what, what sparked your interest to bring Pittsburgh? Like what did you see about the city other than, you know, you just moved here for your job. And mm -hmm. what did you see that, it wanted, oh, this is something I can bring, you know, to fruition here yes. in this city. Yeah. So there's a lot of other black cities that you could have, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I, you know where I, I usually start where I'm, where, I'm, where I'm at is where I kind of build from. Gotcha. And then, so I was here and I was, I still had the idea because I did it a little bit in Wisconsin and it, it took off a little bit, then it kind of went out, but I still love the idea. Right. I think the idea is important. And we have a lot of black business directories. Um, Camille Bailey, who I partner with, has Cocopreneur, which is a black business directory. Yes. We have shout out to Camille. Yeah, shout out to Camille. <laughs> we have a lot of other black business directories. So I didn't want to be in that space again because she occupied that space. Gotcha. But how do you complement that space? How do you supplement that space? And what I noticed is that, um, my wife always tells this story. She gets kind of mad at me, but she was spending money on our Capital One credit card and she was getting all these rewards yes. for gift cards. Yeah. And she was getting um, Target rewards, Amazon rewards, Home Depot rewards. And she was giving those away as Christmas presents. Right. And I said, well, let me look at the app. Let me look at the list of businesses to see if there are any black owned businesses that we can give people black owned gift cards to. And there wasn't. And there weren't any. <laughs> so I went and went on a, uh, on a mission and I went to every single other cash back application in the market, the mobile ones, and looked at their roster of merchants and I found two black owned businesses mm -hmm. out of 
twenty applications and, and over two or three thousand merchants. Wow. So I, like there's no and we have some very popular black owned businesses that are very large. Absolutely. Like Black Girl Sunscreen, Black and Bold Coffee, um, yeah. Honey Pot. There's right. a lot of them. And so I said, how can I support something like, like that Camille's already doing by supporting local black owned businesses right. with the directory yeah. and shining light on them and where they are and then compliment that. So I said, why not just create a mobile application right. where you can scan your receipts, spend money there, and then you get points. Right. And shine lights on the local businesses. And, and so I just took my initial um, idea and built on top of that and then tried to partner with people who are already there supporting the um, black business ecosystem. Yeah, and what I love about that is when we're talking about, and this kind of leads into our financial topic for today, mm -hmm. when we're talking about black businesses and uh, you know Emerald City, Greenwood Plan, and the things they do, giving space to black businesses mm -hmm. intentionally. Yes. So then here comes Art with an application that, let's be honest, technologies was driving you know the next generation and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so you having that idea, and I, I love how you guys, how you your, your wife kind of helped you get to your yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. um, but you are very you were very intentional. So now when we get into talking about the black dollar, because mm -hmm. um, a lot of the conversation centered around uh, Pittsburgh and in our community is, mm -hmm. you know, well, when are we going to have a space that we're spending our money in our communities? Mm -hmm. And you kind of have a stepping stone toward mm -hmm. helping us yeah. reach that goal. So yeah. we might as well dive right into yeah. how yeah. we're splitting our black dollars. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I looked at, because when you start a business, you know, this is come just some advice as long as you cannot just jump right in and make your product you have to do research yeah. so i had the idea in 2019 i did research for like a year right. i wanted to make sure that this was a space that wasn't occupied right so i had to I had to research um how black people spend where are we spending how are we spending right and um i'm going to go through a few numbers i don't want to bore you please stay awake <laughs> but i want to but i'm a finance guy i always go through yeah. numbers <laughs> but i mean for any business owner that's really worth their salt you should understand that having those business analytics those numbers mm -hmm. is how revenue and net worth yeah. actually work so mm -hmm. please don't get bored but okay, bored. <laughs> so the studies by nielsen and other people about african-american spending power they say we have 1.9 trillion in spending power, and that's more in this in this country. That's more than some countries around the world. Right. We we have that much revenue, create that much um, uh, spending power with the, our, our our money, with the dollars that we have. Right. During that same time period, I found that African American businesses generated 183 billion in revenue. Mm. So basically, what that means is we spend 1.9 trillion. But the businesses get 183 billion. So basically, if you assume that all the money they earned was from black people, 10% of our money went to black owned businesses. So where'd the other 90% go? Right. That was the question I had. And this was another report by Nielsen. Nielsen stated that um, in 2017, African Americans spent $873 billion on consumer goods. I've heard that. Don't hair know. products. Um, skincare products, dry goods, water. We spent $873 billion. Right. Black-owned businesses at the same time earned $183 billion. So where is our money going? Right. If we're spending $873, but they're only getting $183 billion, that's a huge gap. Huge. So therefore, what I found is that we spend between 5 and 10% of our money with black-owned businesses. Now that's at a huge aggregate level. And what I ask you to do, and you can report back to Tyler, you can get on his uh his comments. Think about what you spent last weekend. Right. People spend at Target, Walmart, John Eagle on the weekend. That's where you go spending your money because you gotta get stuff done. Yep. Think about your spend. I had to do an honest inventory. I have this business and my number was below five percent, so I'm not gonna front. I'm not gonna be here on Tyler Same. show lying, right? Yeah. My number was low. Think about where you spend and what you can how you spend your money. The majority of my non-restrictive money take away your rent because you got to pay that on your mortgage right. and your your car note and your insurance health insurance that money is going to whoever right. but your non-restrictive leftover money how much of that are you spending and my number was low my number was low and i already and i didn't even get in debt to how you did but mm -hmm. um it's picked up over the years yes. because we've been 
me and my wife have been intentional mm-hmm. spending black spending mm-hmm. our dollar in the black community, but I still it's still not where it needs to yeah. be. I know that. So. And I looked at the <laughs> census data um, of the non restrictive funds for African Americans, and it averages around um, fifteen thousand annually of non restrictive funds. Now that number, of course, is an average because you have people like you know Jay Z, Beyonce, they spend that in a, in a day or two. Right. But everybody, but you look on the average is like you know fifteen thousand annually, right? Right. If you think about that number, we spend then over the course of a year only fifteen hundred dollars with a, a black owned business. Mm-hmm. That means we're giving ninety percent of our money to white owned businesses and others. Yep. And we're not fueling our own community. Not at all. And so what I'm trying to solve are, are two problems, and that's why I partner with Camille. Like one, um, talk about the businesses and know where they are and then give you a financial incentive to, incentive to support them and drive right. people to them. And one of the things about my app, if you ever download it, and I'll give you the link later on in the show, yeah. is that you can put a goal in your phone and say, I have a goal to spend just 200 bucks this month with a black owned business. And as you scan receipts over that time period, you'll see if you hit that target. And if you hit that target on the app, you'll get another bonus. So it's a way to really help you see where you're spending, help right. you see what you're doing, and hopefully over time you can hit that goal, then increase that goal. Correct. Hit that goal, then increase that goal. And what I love about what you're doing, so for those who don't know, and I keep, I'll keep repeating it, we got the week. I work for financial institutions, and one of the things that I do is open business accounts for uh, mail. A lot of my business customers are minorities. Um, I'll just be honest with you. Um, black, um, and maybe, you know, that Hispanic, you know, things of that nature, but majority is black owned businesses and they're either entrepreneurs, brand new business, um, or their existing business that, you know, they've only been in existence for a few years. But I say all that to say, the goal for me when I'm meeting my uh, business customer is to have a transparent conversation about what their business is Mm -hmm. and what they're trying to do and where they see it in the next few years. Mm -hmm. And this is, again, this has nothing to do with what I do for the institution, but it's really just me wanting to see what I can do because all bankers aren't created equal. And one of the things I want to do is see how I can help elevate that business. So with all that being said, Art don't even know I'm doing this, but <laughs> I'm getting him a real list of business owners uh, in their businesses. So that way, when I'm ready to hand him a list, hey, Art, these are the individual businesses mm-hmm. that I told about what you're doing. Mm-hmm. This is what they do. This, you know, how can we make this match? Mm-hmm. So now they can just either, you know, Art will share the link of how to get on the app. Mm-hmm. And now he has his uh, list of businesses that so he can use for his data and his metrics to start moving this thing forward mm-hmm. um, because we're about to get into you know where you see this you know a year from now two years five years from now mm-hmm. if you got a nice little network of businesses yes. now we can take this global yes and mm-hmm. you know make this thing really pop so that's kind of my perspective as someone who knows art pretty well um, you know I'm just so in awe about his vision and what he's doing um, and this is just how I see I can see myself helping towards that mm-hmm. by providing him a list of business owners and letting those business owners know, hey, this app is built for your network and what mm-hmm. you're trying to do. Right. Because a lot of times the business owners I'm dealing with, their main demographic is minorities. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's really interesting because when you're a business owner, your focus is your product. Correct. And you're trying to figure out whether it's a restaurant, whether it's. Uh, soap, whether it's perfume, oil, candles, candles. You're trying to just get that product <laughs> to the consumer, and build, first of all, the way you want it, so it works well, so it smells well, and then to the consumer, right? Right. So your priority is I want to make a great product, and so the marketing piece, the promotion piece, is something that is kind of left um, not unattended. It's just it's just like third or fourth on your list, right? Right. And so what we want to do is by working together and working as a community. Right. You know, strange thing, but work as a community <laughs> and building up a network of users and then allowing our businesses to be able to speak to those users in a very unique way, in a very strategic way, yeah. to speak to them about the message and the products they provide for that community. And by working together, we can build this huge network of users who are, who are to your word, intentional. Yeah, this 
this movement that we're talking about will not happen by um, chance. Nope. It will not happen by chance. Um, back in the 60s, they had something called Operation Breadbasket where the um, where they weren't hiring African Americans and the grocers were like, stop shopping there. Right. If they're not hiring you, stop shopping there. Come, come to a place that's going to hire you and respect you. And so that was something that really drove people to, um, to those grocery stores. And while we've made some advances, we still need to be intentional about what we're doing. Absolutely. Uh, we need to really focus in on, on what we're doing. And I want to, I get to it later, but it's really not making uh, major changes. Right. It's not about overhauling your entire house. I, I'll give an example. Um, as I was starting my journey, I went something simple. I was like looking at my, my, my bathroom. I said, what's in here that I can buy black? It's very simple. I went to webuyblack.com. I got some toothpicks, put them in the house. It's 10 bucks. Right. But that was it. It was just a change in my toothpicks. I use them and I just keep buying it from that website. I've spent like maybe 60, 70 bucks there because you know, you, you know, toothpicks are inexpensive, but that's just one change. Right. And from there, you can think about what's your next change. And we want to really um, support people as they, as, they, as they make those changes. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, when we think about, you know, we just came off Black History Month is, is, is March. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, like, why are we only choosing a month? out of the year to be intentional about buying black. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, several years ago, that was kind of, my brain, my mind didn't really think about that mm -hmm. until that month came. But no, no more. Now I'm, I'm a, I'm advocating the community, making sure when I go to vendor events, I got a budget, but I come in intentionally mm -hmm. buying candles, mm -hmm. uh, uh, jewelry. My wife loves jewelry. Mm -hmm. um, so the more things that I know I can get from a black business owner or, or black company mm -hmm. you know that's going to change where our spending goes mm -hmm. from shoot if there was a equivalent to a black walmart <coughs> uh you know or short of something to amazon i probably would be purchasing from there but mm -hmm. until we create those spaces for ourselves mm -hmm. you know what we should be looking to overhaul mm -hmm. where we're getting things mm -hmm. and again even if you're not we should really look at all right how much stuff do i get from a black owned business if i can like I'm, our number is probably 10 to 15 percent if I can boost that 25, even 30, I want to get the least 30, 40% yeah. mm -hmm. of our household being intentionally mm -hmm. bought mm -hmm. from a black business or a black uh, company, mm -hmm. you know, just be intentional about doing that. Yeah. And, I, and to, to your point about uh, Black History Month, I was thinking that um, after the unfortunate death of, of George Floyd, yes. um, people went to search for black owned businesses and it, and it spiked up. I saw that, yeah. And all of a sudden, when that was over, it, it went back down. Yeah. Yep. And so what happens is that our spending with black owned businesses is fueled by an incident, whether it's when um, uh, police brutality, police brutality, yeah. uh, Colin Kaepernick when I, you know, was, was doing something, you roll up, get up with the collar, and then it went back down. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do is create a, a steady stream of upward movement based on, on, on information, on incentives, on marketing and promotion that it's not, it doesn't ebb and flow with a situation, but it becomes a part of what we do as uh, um, a community yes. of what we want to do. And so that when the month ends, like you said, in February, and then Target and Walmart and the rest of them are gone with their Black History promotions, mm -hmm. and they're back to promoting all the other brands, we're still saying we're going to focus in on the brands that we know will support our community, which will supply jobs, right. which will grow companies which will increase our economy so that that 183 billion grows over the next two or three years to half, you know, half of them, you know, to 500 billion, right. you know, we want that number to grow. So we're, so we want to really be a part of the lives of our um, good users and our businesses. Right. So that we make this community of thinking about how we spend, knowing how we spend and knowing the impact of how we spend. And so we have a lot of ways to do that. And, and, and so I, um, we'll talk about some of that stuff as well. Absolutely. And so with that being said, um, what are some of the goals that you have or, you know, I will say uh, accomplishments that you have mm -hmm. highlighted that you want to get see within the next year, mm -hmm. three years, four years, five years? Because mm -hmm. um, honestly, man, I could see this being huge. Um, from a global standpoint, once we really get the traction that we need yes. locally, mm -hmm. then you know, mm -hmm. let's say let's say Baltimore, um, let's say DC, mm -hmm. let's say New Orleans, 
um, you know, keep going. You know, a lot keep of going. these cities can. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I've, yeah. you know, I'm not an expert on any of these cities, but a lot of this what we're talking about mm-hmm. could help increase a lot of the communities where predominantly black Atlanta mm-hmm. and you know so yeah. where do you see and you know yeah. do you have a timetable yeah I do have a timetable and I would just say that um, the people I speak to in this community outside this community see the need for this right. and they've been really supportive so I really that really keeps me going because when you're a solopreneur with um, there's some hard days so some, some, <laughs> uh, five kids at home yeah. and, and two are 18 to 20. But there's three, three young ones, you, and you have a job, you have a lot to do with your time. Absolutely. But with that being said, um, we launched in April of 2023, and we only, it was an MVP. So it only did one thing was took a picture of a receipt. Mm-hmm. We know it didn't, we did we know it didn't do much, but we just wanted to get out there. We had like 600 people subscribe, oh. really sign up. We had 120 businesses, about 20, 25 local ones. And so that was really great. But we know we needed, we needed to add more functionality. So when people download a receipt, they get instant points. That will be added in, that's already added, that's complete, now we gotta fix some things. I gotta, um, we have to add more gift cards from local businesses. Right. So we're getting local more, so so you can still get a Walmart gift card or a Tiger gift Mart card, but I also want um, Napa Kindle gift card from them. Um, Natural Beauty Supply. Napa Kindle. Yes, yeah. Natural Beauty Supply gift card from them. Um, Crown Line. And then also as we expand, so we're gonna have those gift cards on that. So you can, you know, shop, get some local gift cards. We also want to make it easier for you to um, let us know of a black-owned business. Right. To give you points for that. So let's say if you shop at a place. So it's a referral system. Referral. Yeah. It's not on my app. You refer it. You come in. If they are, they want, they sign on, you get points. Now, that's right. a non-monetary way to just give points to our gift cards. We want to do that. So those are the, some of the features that we're adding. The other feature that we're adding that I think is really cool is we're adding a way so that Every dollar that you earn in cash back, mm. that same dollar amount will be donated to a charity of your choice. Nice. So when you sign up, let's say you sign up and you want to support the NAACP, you would click that in, they will they will be there. So if you earn five bucks in cash back, yeah. we will donate five bucks to the NAACP. Therefore, you're supporting yourself, you're supporting the black business, you're supporting an organization that supports black people. Right. It keeps it going. So then with those features, down. That's the that's the, that's my brain going to the, the detail, <laughs> but the bigger picture is we're going to start going to other cities. Right. We're going to push out to uh, the ones in Ohio that are really close to us: Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, um, Philadelphia. Major population, like you said, um, the DMV area, um, New Jersey. We're doing that within the next two months. I'm doing the business plan today or sales plan today to really go to those places nice. and and get to those businesses. We're trying to partner with chambers of commerce and partner with um, different uh, directories. Where do I see myself in three years? At least over 5 million users on a monthly basis to be nationwide. Now, we're at 400 now. It's a number to grow to. But I do believe with the partnerships we're forming with people like like Tyler, with like Camille, with the small businesses like um, Nabakindo and Natural and others that really support Ujima, that support me, We'll have those in every city and we'll be able to grow. And I think we'll, and the people on board will find um, the financing and we'll make it happen. So I do see us being at 5 million users, national within five years, really, and changing the trajectory of our spend. Right. That's going to be, no matter how many users we get, if we can change the intentionalness and the trajectory of our spend, it'll show up. And that'd be one of my proudest moments. And honestly, if you are a black minority business, or I'll just say minority business, mm-hmm. um, definitely link up with myself, Art, um, or get in contact with me. I'll connect you with Art and get your business on the Black Diamond app. Um, and again, he'll Art will talk about the descriptions here in a minute. Um, but I do got to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Because this just came up in one of my financial literacy workshops. Um, there was, you're familiar with Shark Tank, correct? Yes. So there was uh, multiple um, minority business owners who went on Shark Tank. Um, they either, you know, flopped and didn't get anything or they did, you know, get an offer. Do you see yourself ever taking that route or are yes. you just, you know? <laughs> no, no, I, no I, I tell you the truth. I, am, I have worked with um, trying to raise capital. I'm trying to raise capital from the investors to grow. 
And I'll tell you, and if you're a, a black owned business and you're trying to grow, whether it's on your own or through investment, I suggest you look into a sender. They have an incubator. Yes. Um, Nadili Nunez, she runs it. I think that's right. Nadili runs it. And I joined that incubator and they gave me a lot of help and support to grow my application to, to launch. Mm -hmm. And they have um, they have a event for black owned businesses where they give out eight thousand dollars. They have one for Hispanic owned businesses where they give out money and they really support they just did one for black history. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah, they really yeah. support black owned community. So so that helped me out. Now that's a plug for those guys because yeah. they've been really supportive, but they helped me try to find financing, and I am in the investment community because I do think that I need to grow as an app with financing, gotcha. with, with with venture capital, and that is one of my goals. Okay. Um, and it's tough because, you know. I'm just asking if I see you on Shark Tank one day, boy. <laughs> and I tell you, I am, I'm, everybody says, you on Shark Tank? I'm like, I am. I just want Shark Tank. Every time I pitch to, I pitch to a lot of investors around town. Oh, yeah. And um and those mini Shark Tanks, and it's, it's tough to get money for an African-American business, but yeah. hang in there. For sure. Hang in there because you will sure. find one that goes, that's the idea, and then they will support it. Yes. Absolutely. And that's awesome because when we're talking about um, advancing the black dollar and making sure we're keeping it in our community, these aren't conversations that are had, you know, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, so I know, for instance, that's why I attend things called uh, Wealth Wednesdays yes. or Motivational Mondays by mm -hmm. Bernard Alexander, Brandon Rice, Wealth Wednesdays, because I can't think of a place... Other than Emerald City, um, shout out to them again, mm -hmm. where there's a place for our, our community and we're having these type of conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, short of having this conversation with you, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. we yes. always, in our smart barber shops and other yeah. places, we talk about, oh, the Jewish community, they got their whole, yeah. they all rally around each other. The Asian community, you know, that's all we ever hear. Yeah. But anyone actually stepping up and doing something tangibly mm -hmm. that, can actually make change, mm -hmm. I don't see that. Yeah. And I'm really calling everybody to the carpet when I say that, because mm -hmm. even myself, and I think you, Camille, and you know a few others in the community, I've really seen mm -hmm. putting your money and your, you know, yeah. putting, you know, standing behind what you're saying, yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to just, you know, the same old rhetoric that we spill. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody's doing this, nobody's mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. And here we have a vehicle and a tool and an asset that we're, you're actually creating yes. that we can all gather around and galvanize. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody who's watching and, uh, you know, on the, on the platform, Definitely look to uh, you know do more than just listen. Put some action in place. So that's my call to action. <laughs> yes, and I, and I would say I would back that up. And I would also at just just being here for the short five years I've been here, I've seen a lot of talked a lot of good people who are really supportive of this type of mission. And the action, like I said it before, is not it's not major. No, downloading an app takes ten minutes. You do it anyway. You do it anyway. You do it. And anyway. then when you go when you go to um, Walmart or Target or you out, just switch one one a week for something else. Get a different deodorant, a black on deodorant for a different your deodorant. Just make that one switch. We're not we're not moving mountains here, we're just moving pebbles. Right. But eventually it will turn into something humongous. So your backgrounds in strategic and financial planning, mm -hmm. do you work with individuals, um, specifically minority uh, business owners, because one, um, when I work with different people in the or, uh, community who the biggest thing that they see is or that flies around on social media within, um, you know, the local groups mm -hmm. is I need funding. I need a business plan. Mm -hmm. I need help with this. I need help with that. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, they don't know all the resources that exist. Mm -hmm. You mentioned one, Ascender, mm -hmm. Bernie Sliberty, uh, Catapult's another great organization. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of organizations, uh, Pitt, SB, SBA or SBC, I always forget their initials. Well, yeah, the Duquesne, SBC, Duquesne, SBDC. Yeah. SBDC, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's so many resources out there that you can get help with business plans mm -hmm. and help get uh, understanding on how you can create your uh, profits and loss and all those different mm -hmm. graphics that you need to go in a business mm -hmm. plan. Do you work with individuals in helping them get there? Or are you, are you leaving financial planning alone altogether or just... Where are you at with that? You no, know, right now I, I do work with um, people who request. Okay. Like if so, if you if you're a small business um, and you want somebody to help you do your one year plan or your or your five year plan or really help you understand your cost and and, and what what that entails and how you want to um, where you see yourself over three to five years, 
I can help you do that. I can help you with an Excel spreadsheet, look at your numbers and help you put that together. Um, because I do think that's important. Because right. if you don't know, you don't make a plan, you have no idea how to get there. Exactly. Right? And, and sometimes when you're in the business, you're so focused on just the day to day, you, you, don't, you don't look up. So I hope you look up and see, this is where you want to be. This is how you start investing. This is where you have to start um, moving your dollar and focusing on certain products. Um, I do offer that and I'm available to help with that. It's one of my um, supplemental roles. Yeah. And I don't, um, but I do offer that if you if you want that help, I can offer that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, again, put something in the comments or reach out to me or reach out to Art <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and we will uh, connect you with him uh, because there are people in our community who want to help and are willing to help. Mm -hmm. But if we don't know you need it, you know, we can't help you. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, a few things that I know we just did because uh, we partnered with Rafiq in the shop mm -hmm. uh, over Black History Month to do the Black Expo. Yes. Um, I just wanted to give um, you know my thoughts on that and then if you sure. want to add something to mm -hmm. it because um, one, I thought it was a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, if you have not been in Homewood, um, the shop where uh, Rafiq, awesome guy, shout out to him. He has uh, the space that allowed us to do the Black Business Expo. Was it a pop-up expo or business yeah, expo? Bus business expo. Business expo. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of vendors there. Um, there were, I'll be honest, we didn't get the community support and turnout that we were looking mm -hmm. for. But at the end of the day, um, there was so much love and respect and um, just happiness around the whole idea that people did who did show up, you know, they bought products, they supported, mm -hmm. and you know, while we need to alter and pivot to be able to get a bigger turnout, um, I still was phenomenal uh, for put together, and you know, I enjoyed everyone who was able to stop by, mm -hmm. and um, I was I was even a vendor for one of the weekends, yes. and it was really awesome. So, yeah. shout out to you for uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was our, that was our, that was my first time partnering with Rafiq. We met. When he when he bought the uh, building the shop and we had a, we, we just really been connecting on supporting businesses. Rafiq does it to give him a little promotion. He does it through video videography, yeah. um, podcast, and he's great at he's giving great. you a great video marketing strategy. Yes. Um. So we wanted to provide our vendors that piece, and then I partner more on the other side of the marketing piece. But we, he has a great space, which he's still fixing up. So it wasn't even in, in his final state. Not at all. And when it becomes his final state, it's going to be a place that you will want to be at. Trust me. It's going to be immaculate. It's going to be, he, showed, he showed me the plans. <laughs> it's going to be immaculate. So okay. it was great working with him and, and being able to see how he operates, see how he moves. And he does on point, a good executive, uh, very articulate, just a great guy to work with. So yeah, yeah. when we're doing this again, we talked about it, how we're going to pivot, as you talked about, and do this again and probably in August. Mm -hmm. We both are going to grow our businesses and our network. We're both going to expand and make some changes and add more value for, to each other, I mean, separately to our businesses, right. and then come back. And we'll let you know because um, we really want um, people to really um, see what's, in, what's here in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. And be um, intentional about spending that black dollar. Yes, indeed. Oh, now, how many times we got to say it? <laughs> we're going we to keep saying it until it catches on. Until somebody wake up and uh, start taking some action. Um, yeah, so, and then I know, um, you know, I don't know if any plans or events you have coming up, um, but one of the ones I really want us to connect on is one of the biggest ones, the Hill District Block Party is coming mm -hmm. up, I believe it's April 27th, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that is always a major turnout, um, mm -hmm. that's one of the proudest moments I can say for, you know, the black community, mm -hmm. because, Every year, peep the anticipation is mm -hmm. always there. Mm -hmm. um, rain, sun, don't matter what the Man, weather. People, people show up show and up. show out. Yes, um, so I think it's a great opportunity um, to have mm -hmm. you know as many businesses that are going to be there, mm -hmm. vendors, um, really using that opportunity mm -hmm. to start shining light on what yeah. you know Black Diamonds bring to the table. So yeah. um, that's something we'll, we'll talk about. Yeah, okay. I, I was uh, <laughs> last year was my first time visiting. I partnered with um, Cobbler World. Um, oh, yes. to, to Serena Hicks, shout out to her. She's shout one of the first her. vendors that ever popped on Black Diamond. Yes. She's a very supportive and she makes great <laughs> dessert. Trust me. Oh, yeah. It's the right. So I uh, worked, worked with her and um, had their information. And that was a great event. This year I do plan to be there, but I want to do more of a gift card giveaway. I think at that time we had the ability to really give away some gift cards. So 
I'm still figuring that out. But if you show up and you have the app downloaded, you might win something free. So look out for them. And then Absolutely. I'll talk to Tyler as well because we got to figure out how we want to um, really just um, add gas to your intentional behavior. You want to really fuel it. For sure. Yeah. Yep. So April 27th, the Hill District Block Party, if you aren't already aware, uh, make sure you're there. So. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything specifically that you wanted to mention about um, spending black intentionally that you haven't brought up already? No, I don't think there's anything um, that I want I want to bring up. I would like to say that my name is called Black Guy Marie Wars, but it's spelled funny because I, I tried to I tried to be slick. <laughs> so if you're listening to this, and I'm sure to be in the comments, is www.blkdymnd rewards.com so that's the spelling because um, I want to give a little bit of flair and I have a different name than other companies absolutely look that up and you go to the website and see what we're doing and see that the business that we work with but I would just say that and I'll reiterate it that reiterate that we need to one not beat ourselves up you know we're, we're doing a lot of great things as um, black business owners. We are the largest growing entrepreneurs in the country. Yes. Black entrepreneurship grew 13%. Oh, nice. It's growing. Even after COVID, it's growing. And our the money that we've earned has gone up from $121 billion mm. about five years ago, 183 So we're seeing some growth in how, how we have, you know, in that sector. Right. So we have to stay on the positive as well. Absolutely. And you have to say that um, stay, stay positive and continue to support one another. With my app, you will be able to find other businesses to support that are black owned. Right. And at least you're aware. And you can save favorites to it and you're aware. And then just make a plan. One at a time, once a month. You we don't have to like, you know, eat the whole elephant as they say. Just slow changes. Right. And then you'll find yourself at the thirty or forty percent that Tyler talked about. Absolutely. And you will be able to see the jobs that you create from your change in behavior. Yeah, and uh, on that note, um, so I go to a lot of events that have a lot of vendors. And while I love seeing that, um, when I connect with a vendor, the goal is to understand, well, how long are you actually gonna continue to be a vendor? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a brick and mortar? Are you looking to grow your business to more of an online space? Or like, how long are you gonna continue to, you know, pour into being a vendor? when you know what is your ultimate goal so a lot of times when i get that the goal is to try to help individuals either by connecting with me or if you can't if you don't want to connect with me connect with someone else and let's really start trying to be strategic strategic planning <laughs> about what your business looks like because if you I'm, I'm you know no disrespect for anybody who's business but if you're been vending for 10 plus years now granted if that's how you make supplement income and that's what you like and that's your space more power to you, God bless you. But if you started it as a side hustle and now you're trying to elevate or, you know, let's really, you got to get with acquiring minds for people who can help you get to those next steps. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a village. And if you are not willing to build your team or re, uh, you know, duplicate yourself and make your product more exposure to the masses, you're really doing yourself a disservice because you could, if you study business one on one, <laughs> Like that's they'll teach you how you can make money without actually make you know working is the yeah. goal, mm -hmm. and for those who have those aspirations, um, people like Art, myself, and others, you know, we're trying to figure out how we can you know pour into you to be able to make those next steps. So I just want to leave you with that. But on top of that, um, Art, if you want to leave people with a way to get in contact with sure. you, sure, yeah. Um, yeah. Outside of Black Diamond, and then, yeah. and then I'll give uh, the closing remarks. Yeah, so now I want to just first of all thank you for having me here today. Oh, man, I really appreciate you to talk about you know yeah. what you do, how you support the community, and what you've done. I've seen you in a lot of events. You really are supportive of businesses here, so I really appreciate everything that you do. Appreciate that. Um, and you can get in touch with me, like I said, at www.blkdymndrewards.com. We have a contact us button. You can contact us if you're a business. You can go there and sign up um, if you want to, and then just reach out to me and, and ask questions. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you have about the app, and I'm here to make it to help it grow. Um, we are in our um, growth stages, so there will be bugs. Don't leave me when there are bugs. <laughs> we'll get them fixed. 
but we're creating something that allows you to support you in your intentional buying and supporting your black owned businesses to help you see that growth and then continue that growth. So um, reach out if you have questions and good luck in your journey. Absolutely. And think of any of your favorite tech companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft, name them. They've all probably had bugs before. You know, they didn't just pop up one day <laughs> and be what they are. Yeah. It took a process, it took steps. So make sure you just understand that process and I mean, if anything, take pride in someone in our community uh, even taking this initiative, because I know I do. Um, so I'm just going to, so as you said, I got to act. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm all in. Um, so with that being said, uh, you can also find art through me, um, through Face Financial Literacy with TC, through the comments. Hit that subscribe button for the YouTube, Spotify, Financial Literacy with TC, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, um, my number is public, <laughs> so mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to me if you need to get the art. I can also give you and get you in contact with him. But outside of that, um, as always, this is Financial Literacy with TC. Hopefully you saw value in talking about uh, financial literacy, um, spending black, um, and being intentional about it. If you did so, please make sure you tap in with us. And uh, as always, I just want to thank you guys for joining me. And next week, we'll be diving into another financial topic. And we will be here uh, to represent for the black community. With all that being said, I'm TC, and this is Financial Literacy with TC. Financial Literacy with TC. You guys have a great one.